Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle from Made by Michelle McGraw. And I don't know what Floss Tube number this is. This is being filmed out of order so that I can share with you my secret Santa stitching. So I also have some previous finishes that I'm gonna show you. So this could be a little bit different Floss Tube, but I figured I'll be able to show you and we'll stick it in here. I don't believe I'm gonna be able to show this until after December 4th, so I am filming this in November. So um, I participated in a secret stitching smalls um, organized by Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, and we just said whether we wanted to be included in the stitch along and or the secret Santa exchange, and then her and her fiance pulled names, match people, and so I was matched to Celeste. Celeste can, um, Celeste creates? Celeste creates. Why did I draw a blank? Because I watch her floss tube. Um, so that's who I was paired with. And we were given a set of questions. So you could leave it open willy-nilly. Literally, you could stitch anything they wanted to based on the season that they um, wanted or you could specify what you liked, what you didn't like, um, colors, anything like that. So hold on, let me grab my cards. I'm gonna have to move for just a second. Hello, sorry. I've been looking for these cards and I haven't been able to find them and I just realized I placed them in my dough bowl. So I would know where they're at. Okay, so for my stitching, Celeste wanted Christmas. She said she liked Santa's. She liked, um, how did she say it? I think like primitive, but bright colors as well. So in finding, in keeping those things in mind, she also said that she decorated like religiously for Christmas, um, other things. And so I really, there's a fly. Okay, just so you know, it's not a different fly. This is the same fly that was in floss tube number 61 because I'm filming it on the same day. That fly is going to die today. Today. It's going to die. Just so you know. Don't feel sorry for the fly. It has chosen to come inside, which means it wants to die. If it wanted to live, it would have stayed outside. Just so you know. All right. And I believe that was spiders too. Although if you're around my house as a spider, you get killed too because I don't like spiders. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> so. With keeping everything that Celeste said in mind, I looked through my patterns, looked through just what what fit, what did I want to stitch for her. I had a couple ideas. I ended up sticking with the Santa because that's actually what she specifically said she liked. So I stuck with that. I wanted it prim looking, but with bright colors. And I think the Calico Confectionery Old Father Christmas 1838 fit that bill. So I had a couple of their patterns and I was showing my sister and she said this one was, was really cute. So this one, what it was, she, she picked it and I, I think I had four of them and I was like, I'm going to go with what she said. So I stitched this on 32 count old stationery from Seraphin Fabrics and I'm going to show my little one first. So the little one is this little reindeer one right here and I wanted to do a small because maybe she wanted to put this in a tiered tray I wanted just a little something extra it didn't take no time at all to stitch up and I did the little deer I did change the year I put the year 2001 on there and he is stitched in the same fabric and he is stitched using the same backing. So the backing is this velvet from Lady Dot Creates. And I cannot remember the name of the velvet. It actually goes from like a tanny to a purpley, but it looked really good with the, with the um, linen. So that's why I chose that. So I put a Merry Christmas bow on there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I put Lady Dot Creates trim around here with vintage. So the trim on. So that's the little. Let me show you the big one I did for her, which is the Santa, the full Santa. 
and I love how he turned out. He is bright and colorful and he is just what I wanted. So I hemmed and hawed about how I was gonna finish him. I had gotten the tag from Michaels that I could finish him on. Here's the thing, I'm not known for my tag finishes. I would like to get better on flat fold finishes. That's my goal in the new year. But that's not really what I'm good at right now. And I don't want to say good at because that makes it sound like I'm so good. No, but I, that, is a, that is a finish that I need to practice. So I didn't think that that was putting my best foot forward. I am not a good flat folder finisher, if that makes sense. I want to get better, but I need to work on it. I didn't think that that would be a good thing to send out in the world that I did. I could do pillows. Hands down, I can sew straight lines and make pillows. You can too, I promise. So that's what I wanted to do. So I thought I'm gonna stick with what I'm kind of known for doing this year. I'm known for doing pillows and that's what I'm gonna do. Now, this is poly filled because if she wants to put it on her tree, it needed to be light. So I did not put any lizard litter in it, um, but she could stick this up in a tiered tray or put this in a dough bowl. She doesn't have to put this on her tree, but she can. So let's go in close. There he is all stitched up. I did use all of the called for colors. Um, trying to think, they're all DMCs, which was nice because it stitched up. I changed the year to 2001. It was supposed to be 1838 and I like the year better. I did add a Merry Christmas charm on here. And I put a bow up here with a hanger. And I finished it using Vana's tutorial, using that button, because that is my favorite way to do it. And I used that same hand dyed velvet. It's not showing up on camera as well because it is a tanny purple. And it is hand dyed, it's not a solid color, it's beautiful. I do have a little stash of velvet trim. I hoard it because it is so pretty when it's done. And so I wanted this to be something special. So I popped out my velvet trim. Not only that, but this blue, let me see what color this is. The blue used is 3809. It's an odd color blue for Christmas. And so it was really, I could not match it to any Christmas fabric that I had. And so I thought, well, I don't want to, to make it look weird. I want it to match. I like my backing fabric to match the front somewhat or coordinate with the front. And so I had a hard time and I put some plaids up and they weren't right. Um, this velvet just elevated it and made it fancy. And I really was pleased that they both turned out really cute. So she has a set. Now I'm leaving this bow long. She can actually trim that bow. Um, I would trim it if it was staying on my tree, but I kind of like how it is. So I left it. Um, but there's the set. Now she can hang these two together or she can hang this on a big tree and hang this on a small tree or a dough, a little tiered tray or whatever she wants to do. I did use different trim. I used an eyelash trim and I really liked it. It was in the color vintage, which is one of my favorites. And matter of fact, as I was sewing it on, I paused and ordered some more from Lady Dot. I really liked it. I did put on my little label, handmade by Michelle McGraw. And there is my secret stitching for Celeste. So this bow originally was going out this way. <laughs> Sorry. I hope she loves them as much as I enjoyed doing them for her. And they were a lot of fun. I can't wait to do some more secret stitching. That is the first secret exchange that I've participated in, and I had a lot of fun. It was pressure, but in a good way. Like, I wanted to do my best stitching. I wanted to do, um, there was a couple other things that I was thinking about, and then I really wanted to do it on linen. Celeste, in her floss tube, uses a lot of linen. I wanted to keep with what she likes. I will stitch on anything, honestly. Um, there are some linens that I don't like stitching on and I've kind of like stopped and like changed the linen because it's too difficult, but I'll stitch on linen. A seraphin linen is not bad at all. It's, it's nice, even weave of linen. 
not a lot of slubs in it. So I do like seraphin linen. Um, but I wanted to keep with what she liked. So that was important um, for me, for me. When I went to go look at some of the things that she had done and past things, that gave me an idea. So, and like I said, I might have done it on a tag, but I just, I didn't want to put out something that wasn't my best work. And I'm not good at flat folds. I'm learning. I'm, I'm improving. I'm, well, I hope to improve. Um, so I wanted to do something that I thought could be my best work. And I thought that was a pillow. So I stuck with what I knew. Um, so yeah, those are the two pieces that I did. I used the same um, linen on both of them. Really enjoyed that. All right. So now that I showed that, let me show you some finishes that you might not have seen. I know this one I have never shown. I showed it fully finished. I never showed it framed. And this is Felice Navidad from Blackbird Designs. And I did this last year and I stitched it up. I'm sorry, there's glare on this. Let's get the glare off. Oh, this is going to be hard. Um... I stitched this last year and I did go get it finished. Now, as you saw, this has glare. My LMS actually messed up and didn't put anti-glare glass on it. Where I have it, it's not an issue in my house. Had I put it in any other room, I may eventually take it apart and put um, non-glare glass on it, which is what I normally get. But because it was going in my family room, my family, especially on the wall that it's on, it doesn't get direct sunlight. So... Here it is. Sorry about the glare, guys. I had a lot of fun with this. This is stitched on an Ada. I do remember that. It was a bestitch me. I want to say toast, maybe. And I really like that. Here's the frame that I chose. I'm not sure if it's going to show up. There, there you can see some of it. It's a very distressed frame which is my style of framing. I don't like things perfect. Um, I like more distressed. All right, let me show you one I know I haven't shown on here. This is an old one. And a matter of fact, my mom framed this and I can see a bubble in it. I'm not taking it apart though, because it is old school. I stitched this for my husband. Uh, I didn't put a date on here, but I put to Clint, happy birthday, and Merry Christmas, love Michelle. And I have no idea when I stitched it. I stitched this, oh God, years and years ago. My sister, that fly, my sister plugged a logo sticker that I had from Link Bell into a cross stitch program and she created this. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is a crap ton that that fly is gonna go. This is a crap ton of stitching. This was stitched on, this is an 18 count Ada. So there is a lot of stitches in those letters. Um, at the time we had started our own business and we had bought a link belt track hoe and that's why I stitched that for him. This hangs in my boy's room. Um, they have some of pictures of our equipment on the wall and then pictures of my dad with his dump truck when my dad and his dad and his uncle had dump trucks. They have a picture that I have blown up for them. They have it on their wall. So that one, it stays in their room. So this next one, I stitched this. I stitched this for my oldest when he turned 16. I think he got it after 16, but his first car was a Jeep. He still has his Jeep. He has an orange Jeep. I have a blue Jeep. We are a Jeep family. We love them. And I stitched this for him. This was clip art that I found online and I put it through a cross stitch program and made it for him. So there is a lot of stitching on here. Once again, I think that this is linen that I stitched over one. So it's probably, um, it's probably a 28 count linen. I think it's a linen. It might not be a linen. I, I'm not sure. But I stitched this a while ago and it hangs in his room. And I love how it came out. It was a lot of stitching. There's a lot in those 
in those, but I, but I enjoyed it. I have a pattern for my second son, um, a truck, and I actually need to start it because I would love to get it done for his birthday, which is in December. I just don't know if I'm going to get it done or not. Um, we'll see. All right. The next one I'm going to show, I've showed this before, but I thought I'll show it again. This is from Little House Needleworks, and this, I cannot remember, Farm Life, is it? I think it's a popular pattern, so you definitely can find it online. There's dust. Um, I changed all the colors. I brightened up my colors. I stitched it on Picture This Plus uh, Murky. Um, this is, I believe this is 14 Count Murky. I just brightened all the colors up use variegated floss. I started with the red. I picked my red and kind of went from there. And I love how that turned out. I want to add more farm pictures to that wall. But that's the only one I have right now. I actually got this and my husband is trying to find, um, well, he's supposed to be picking up the little holder for the back because this was a um, antique store type thing that I found. And I just loved it. And I, it's a painting and I would just, somebody painted it. It has like a name on it and all, but I loved it. And it was like super du dirt cheap. I got it cause I was like, oh, I like that grungy frame. And then when I got home, I kind of really liked the barn and the cows. And when you look up closely, like, look at that cow. <laughs> I think that's a warthog, but look at that. Like, I just, I love that. So I want to put that wall up on the wall too, because just to know that I really liked it. I, I don't know how it ended up in a consignment store, but I really loved it. All right, if you are new here, I have cross-stitch boards. And if you are interested in my cross-stitch boards, I talk all about them in a floss tube marked special edition cross-stitch boards. It is either in the 30s or, yes, I want to say it might be episode 35, but I could be wrong. Hunt down, it will come up, and it is all about my cross-stitch boards, how I make them, what they looked like. They are super simple to make. Anybody can make them, but, and frames that I use and stuff like that. These are all changed out seasonally. So once again, we are in November as I'm, show, as I'm taping this. So I'm going to show you what's on my cross-stitch boards right now. I have three boards in my house. This is what I have hanging. So the first set is in my kitchen and these can hold the biggest ones. I think these are from Blue Ribbon Designs and these are a set of four. All of my cross stitch boards are sets of four right now. So that's the first one. These are stitched on Ada, I would say like a natural Ada, but I've had them stitched for years so I don't know exactly. I'm not exactly sure what the name of this pattern is, but it's Blue Ribbon Designs. I'm just not sure what, what the name of it is. They had more and I just took the charts and made them individually. That was a fun one with those flowers. And then you have a turkey. Sorry about the glare. These are just picture frames. So I can switch them out. I have put stop fray around the edges. I cut them, put stop fray and put them in there. And I explain all that in that video. So this is another one that sits by my front door. And these are Prairie Schoolers. Now I stitched these a long time ago. Um, this is on an Ada, but I remember this was a very weird wooly feeling Ada. My mom hated cutting these because she said they just kept fraying. I did not cut these. These are ones that she cut when she used to cut for me. Now I just do them myself, but back in the day she used to do it. So that's one. I don't remember the name of this pattern, but it's one of the Prairie Schoolers fall one and it is available to this day. Pumpkin. The Crow. And the Deer. And they're just fall ones that I really like. So this year I put up something different. I have a third board and it is by my bedroom door. And so sometimes I really like to play around with that board because not everybody walks by that door. And so I have never put these up. I have more of these stitched. 
it came off of one of those charts that um, is like 101 construction vehicles or uh, 99 birds. They, they have different ones. I, they're an old chart. So I stitched these little construction vehicles because if you're new here, we own a grading company and a concrete recycling yard. And so um, I stitched these years ago and I've never put them up and I got to put them up this year. So here's a little truck. Now, just so you know, this is an overseas truck. We don't, this type of truck is not done here. There are off-road trucks, but they're not blue here. They're, they're not blue. Um, this is a skid steer. A bulldozer. And this is on some sort of variegated um, uh, cloth. I don't, or like hand dyed cloth. I don't know what the name of it. These were stitched long before I had children. And here's a track hoe. So I just got to have fun with that this year and put those up. Like I said, I've never put them up. And I thought this year is the year I'm gonna put them up. I have some other Thanksgiving-ish patterns but they go in bigger frames, so they don't really fit that board. So I have to go with what my boards fit. And that's what it was this year to put these up. So anyhow, this is a short floss tube. Just some finishes that I had to show. Um, I hope you all are doing well and stitching. And we should be in the middle of Christmas season as you're watching this. So thank you for joining me. If you don't already subscribe, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you back with a regular floss tube with finishes and whips and all that good stuff next time. Thanks.